I like the quiet minor key on which this film ends. If it was made 15 years later, the cops probably would have shot Eddie in a case of mistaken identity. In 1954, America may have been ready for a new Mickey Rooney, but not a dead Mickey Rooney. Now, if that beach house looked familiar, you've seen it in a couple of other movies I've shown on Noir Alley, Tension and 7-Eleven Ocean Drive. It's not, however, the house from Mildred Pierce or Kiss Me Deadly. Those are two different places down the road in Malibu. Now, at the same time, writer Blake Edwards and director Richard Quine were making this film, attempting to expand Mickey Rooney's screen persona. They were also creating a TV series for the actor, The Mickey Rooney Show, in which the 34-year-old Rooney played 23-year-old Mickey Mulligan, working as a delivery boy at a TV studio and dreaming of becoming an actor. It lasted one season. Not long after that, Rooney returned to big screen crime, playing guys on the wrong side of the law in Babyface Nelson, The Last Mile, and The Big Operator. In those films, Rooney went rancid, his keyed up full throttle energy channeled into violent psychopathy. He is completely believable in all of them. And it was this version of himself that Rooney parodied in the 1972 film, Pulp. Now, on the heels of Drive a Crooked Road, Richard Quine directed another terrific noir, Pushover, which introduced Kim Novak to movie audiences. She and Quine had a long-running romance that stalled at the altar. They did make several more films together, however. Bell, Book, and Candle, Strangers When We Meet, and The Notorious Landlady, the latter co-written by Blake Edwards. For a guy who'd become synonymous with comedy, Blake Edwards loved crime stories. He was a major player in the late 50s TV trend in crime shows, creating several series that brought the writer's affection for 40s-style detective fiction and films into the new small-screen era. Mr. Lucky, Richard Diamond, Private Eye, Dante, and Peter Gunn were all primetime shows created by Edwards between 1957 and 1961. He then enjoyed a run of hit films in various genres, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Experiment in Terror, and Days of Wine and Roses, which showed off his versatility. After that, he teamed up with Peter Sellers for The Pink Panther, taking crime around the bend into slapstick farce. In 1969, he married Julie Andrews, and their careers often entwined in the ensuing years, right up to Edwards' death in 2010. Today's villains, Jack Kelly and Kevin McCarthy, had long careers in movies and TV, both working steadily right up till their deaths in 1992 and 2010, respectively. Their co-conspirator, Olga Laruska, that's Diane Foster's original Ukrainian name, co-starred in a few other films in the 50s, including the brothers Rico, shown previously on Noir Alley. After that, she worked mostly in television. In 1966, she retired from the business to devote herself to painting and her family. Okay, I am excited to reveal that next week I'll be joined by a special guest. Actress Dana Delaney will be here to discuss with me the life and career of Gloria Graham, for whom we both share perhaps an inordinate fondness. We'll be presenting the 1954 noir thriller Human Desire. She will also be a guest programmer that night, prior to Noir Alley, hosting two films of her choice. Dana is a pure delight, and she really knows her stuff, so I'm greatly looking forward to cocktails and conversation right here in these big, comfy, and underused chairs. Until then, chat away on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed, but not while you're driving a getaway car down a bumpy back road. See you in the shadows. Mm -hmm.